Kyle, I guess you really didn't ease back into it out there tonight. <laughs> no, man. <laughs> we, uh, you know, Nick, Nick, Nick says he's going to kind of ease it back in and use it as, uh, you know, exhibition. But our competitive spirits, we got too many competitive guys out there that want to go out there and, and play and hoop and win games. And, um, you know, especially playing against a guy like the Lakers and, um, you know, with, with a team that's number one in the West, um, you know, the competitive juices get going. What, what goes through? What gets into you to be out there taking charges from LeBron and hitting threes in transition and setting deadly screens for guys? What what gets you going like that? Well, they call it a blocking foul, which it was a blocking foul, so I didn't get that charge. But just want to win games, man. Just have an opportunity to go out there and, and play for my teammates is, is big for me. And have an opportunity to play basketball and have an opportunity to go out here and, and spread our, our the social messages that we have, um, the Black Lives Matter, um, you know, go out there talking about voter suppression. You know, those are things that are getting me going right now in education reform and, and worried about getting justice with Breonna Taylor. So these things are all things that are getting me going and wanting me to, you know, go out there and do my job the best I can. Thanks, Kyle. I appreciate it. Wrong up. I'm going to go next to Josh Lewinberg from TSN. Hey, Kyle. What, what was that moment like before the game, uh, the two teams kneeling together during the anthem? You had talked the other day about watching other teams do it. What was it like to be a part of that? Unbelievable. Um, I uh, took my hat off to the Lakers and their organization for um, staying down there with us during the Canadian anthem. Um, and I said it after my, my post-game interview, um, to be down there for four straight minutes, I, I didn't my towel and you know I have padded knees I have padded tights on my knees and to think about a human being kneeling on another human being's neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds that's a bad thought to have and an unbelievable messed up thing that that man did to an innocent black man um so those are the things that went through my head but I I, I, I tip my hat for to our organization to Lakers organization for um you know allowing us to um, protest peacefully and, and continue to push our message. Thank you, Kyle. I appreciate that. Well, up next, we got Tim Bontemps from ESPN. You, know, you said after the game, Kyle, that this wasn't a, uh, a statement game by you guys to come out and just play one of these seeding games. Do you think you did send a message, though, to the league that maybe people have not been paying as much attention as they should be to you guys? We, we, we just went out there and played a game. And every game we've always played, and I've said this for the last however many years, these games, the regular season games, are only preparing you for a long haul. And, um, you know, we understand the, the opportunity that we have. We understand the situation. We understand what we need to do, what we have to do. And, you know, take it one day, one game, one day at a time, and just continue to get better for the long term. You know, stay level, stay level headed and level minded no matter what. The moment you guys got down to Florida, you guys have said you all feel locked in, feel good, and where you guys are at. Is, this, is the way you guys played today proof of kind of the, the general vibe that's been around you guys for the past four or five weeks since you got down here? We just want to go play. We want to go out here and play. You know, some guys are down here for different things. Um, our job is to be professional basketball players, but also we want to send messages and, you know, uplift the, uh, the black Americans um, that's out there, black people around the world. And that's our job is to do that. And um, that's what we're doing, show to win games and, you know, keep our messages and the momentum going. Appreciate you, man. Thanks. No problem. Got three more for you, Kyle. We're going to go to Mike Ganter from the Toronto Sun. Hey, Kyle. I wanted to ask you about OG's game tonight. I mean, he's on LeBron all night, but then he's doing it on the other end, too. Can you get into that? OG was unbelievable. I said to him, those two big threes, after LeBron hit his threes and OG came back and hit two big threes, his growth, his maturity, his maturity just continued to get better, and I'm proud of him. Um, one thing about OG, man, is, you know, guys don't understand him as much as they want to, but he's um, he's going to be really good in this league for a long time. Appreciate that. Thanks, Kyle. Go next to Tim Reynolds from the AP. Kyle, you were obviously a pretty good leader last year, considering you guys got those rings and, and got that trophy. But going through that experience and winning that championship, how do you think that made you a better leader? Understanding that there's always going to be some ups and downs, and it's going to be some big waves, and going to be some low waves, and it's going to be some uh, smooth, smooth sailing. But um, just got to be able to just ride the wave, no matter what it is. If it's a high moment, you just stay even. Just try to say your say to yourselves and, and keep level-minded, level-headed. And that's what we continue to, do, and that's what I continue to do. And you know, I take that approach every single day, and um, you know, I think that's where I become just a better person and a man and a leader.
Good, Tim? Yeah, sorry, I was muted. Right. Thank you, Kyle. I'm going to finish off with Mark Medina from USA Today, who should be there in person. Okay, Kyle. <laughs> 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 on, that lead, on that leadership question, uh, you know, you're talking about St. Even Kill, but during these unique circumstances, what were the keys in being able to keep that mindset given just how much everything's going on with the pandemic and the racism? And all that? Just understanding that, you know, um, these times are different. You have to be able to adjust. And that's one thing about professional athletes and professionals in general, the adjustment you know, rate is high. You know, we're able to adjust at any moment, any situation, any time. And um, that, that's the one thing that I've learned throughout my career is being able to adjust on the fly and not being stuck in your own ways. Being able to say, okay, this you know, this team went on a run. How do we make an adjustment to stop that? Um, you know, what do we do with this situation to make an adjustment? How do we, you know, make an adjustment with education reform? You know, how do we make adjustment? And these are things that you know we understand as professionals, as and as men, women, as uh, athletes, as everybody. You know, make adjustments on the fly and be able to do it.